All right, today on Free Field Training, we're taking a look at my police. This is my patrol division vest cover slash some people call it a plate carrier. This is where my body armor goes. I'm going to have another video that is my duty belt. We'll put links up there and down below for all of you so you can follow those. If you don't follow me already, follow me over on Instagram. People on Instagram are watching me shoot this live and they're going to get to ask comments and questions once I'm done with the video. So if you're interested, be able to ask comments and questions of me about this stuff while it's occurring, follow me over on Instagram. That's Tommy underscore free field training. But if you have any comments or questions on any of this, please put it down in the description down below. A lot of the setups that I have lately is from me getting things from companies to show all of you and then putting them into long-term testing. So you're going to see lots of long-term testing stuff in here and some ideas maybe you wouldn't have thought of when setting up your carrier and duty belt on your own. I always like to bring some new educational content to everybody. If you like any of the stuff that you see in this, there's links and coupon codes and all of that for anything that YouTube will let me link in coupon code to down in the description, of course. Some stuff I just can't do that with because of their policies, but uh, it is what it is in that regard. This is my carrier. Uh, there isn't plates in it. This is actually the armor that's in this is Safe Life Defense's FRAS, which is a flexible rifle armor system. So instead of having soft armor and then a plate that covers the front of the vest, which is pretty common now, this entire area, front and back, is rifle protection. They do this by having a branded Dyneema vest, basically that covers the whole area, and then in front of it is a bunch of like honeycomb ceramic plates that cover everything from the sternal notch all the way out to the sides. And they interlock with each other and they're bonded to the front of an aramid fabric, which provides you with plate carrier type protection. So rifle plate type protection against uh, all available currently 223 rounds that we can find including my duty rounds, which is huge for me, and, and most common 223556 rounds. And it gives me coverage in the entire area. So that's something really cool that I've had in long-term testing, and so far I'm really happy with it. It is stiffer than the standard level two soft armor that I'm issued at work, but it provides a significantly larger amount of protection and better protection than level two armor would. That soft armor is normally just good for handguns, this protects against handgun. Handgun rounds just kind of bounce off of it when we were independently testing it. There's a video about us testing this independently up on the YouTube channel, and there will be more in the future. All right, so one of the other reasons that I really like FRAS, this flexible rifle armor that I wear all the time, because this is my all day, every day vest, this is my uniform that I have to wear when I'm at work, is that I always have the rifle protection. For a long time, I had soft armor, and then I had a plate carrier that I could throw over it. We had a whole video, um, police plate carrier. It's one of the early videos on the channel. I could throw that on if I knew I was going to like a barricaded gunman or I knew there was going to be a rifle threat uh, presenting itself. And one of the things that I've learned over you know the last few years since I made that video is that gunfights are come as you are affairs. You don't have time to go back to the car and don a plate carrier. I have found approximately 0% of the time in the course of five years approximately since I made that video about my plate carrier. I have put the plate carrier on about twice, but had numerous situations where it would have been nice to have it on. With the FRAS, I don't have to worry about having a plate carrier. I've got my stuff on me. I've got my rifle protection, and it's more rifle protection from the rifles that I'm most likely to have as a threat in my area. I can have spare ammo. I can have my spare lights. I can have my med kit and everything on me all the time. So when that come as you are event happens, I've got everything I need. There is no running back to the car for anything except a rifle. So if I have a situation where I think that there's a major incident is happening or is going to happen, all I have to grab is one thing, the rifle and everything else I already have. It's, it's one of the great things about having this armor, even though it is pretty expensive. The carrier itself, you can get something very similar from Safe Life that's designed for their armor, but it's not uniform for my department, so I have a carrier made by Eagle Uniform out in Crestwood. Uh, they're one of the approved vendors for vest covers, and I've been pretty happy with the stuff that they've made so far. I'll show you a couple things where I think it's better than what's commercially available off the shelf in some places where it's actually a little worse. Uh, right off the bat is that I've had to re-sew a couple of the pocket spots 
in here where some of the sewing was a little substandard, but given the, the totality of what they're doing, the fact that every one of these is custom built to your armor, that's still pretty good. Uh, there's a Velcro spot here and on this side and on the back for identification. Obviously, I take my agency's patch off of there. This would normally be my name. I use this police patch very much for side jobs where I'm not required to have my name on it, but I want people to know that I'm the police. We can still do that in Illinois as independent contractors. And on the back, there's a huge uh, gray on black patch that says police on it. Uh, that type of identification is very important. Uh, we did a video on the channel about the Kansas City Badge Placement Study. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. We talk about why this type of identification is very important. From top to bottom, left to right, we've got the Guardian Angel device. I've had that in long-term testing probably more, a little more than a year now, and I've been very, very happy with it. There are times out on patrol where you just don't have time or you don't think about, or you get into a situation where you didn't think about before you got out of the car, where you're gonna be out in traffic. And what this is, is beyond being a red light for checking IDs and a white light for kind of hand searching in, in minimal risk situations, it also has a, a mode where you can turn on flashing lights on your shoulder, either front or toward the back or all around. For whatever situation you find yourself in, it's good to have that ancillary lighting. It would be very interesting to see studies on the effect of this of knees uh, versus reflective vests. Obviously you want to have your reflective vests on whenever you're out in traffic, but this is a good auxiliary lighting system. And sometimes, I'll be honest, I have to use it in a replacement for a reflective vest because the reflective vest is in the car. I don't carry it on me all the time. So if I find myself out in traffic, it's a great thing to be able to turn on when I find myself out in traffic and it's kind of a surprise for me. Uh, and here's my keys for work, including a uh, kind of a rescue cutter that's made for the Millspec Plastics Cobra Cuffs, which I'll talk more about here in a second. My keys and then a fob for getting into the building. I keep it all on a Kuboton, uh, not really to use this as any type of control tool, but because it's a very easy way to be able to find your keys. If you drop them in the snow or the leaves or anything or tall grass, the stick sticks up. I still haven't put reflective material on the end of this, which somebody suggested. It's actually a really good idea. Down here in the front pockets, I've got a little bit of money. <laughs> And my knife, this is a CRKT uh, Lightning Thunderbolt, Lake Design Thunderbolt 2 or something like that. It's not in production anymore, unfortunately. I really like this knife, uh, mainly because of the double locking mechanism on the back of it. I'm sure these exist. You have to go out and look for them. But basically, it's a, a liner lock with a locking mechanism where if you stab this into something, your thumb is naturally going to double lock it. What the double lock does is it locks the liner lock in position so you can't accidentally deactivate it. I really like this knife. In this top pocket up here, if I wasn't uh, streaming this on Instagram, I keep my phone up in here so it's out of the way. Normally keep it on vibrate so it's not going off when we're searching a building, but I can slide my phone down inside this extra deep pocket that I had custom made by Eagle Uniform. Over here is another custom pocket. In it, I keep my pen. Right now it's a Pilot G2. There's also another company called Corner Office that makes a cheaper pen that does approximately the same thing and it is also freeze resistant, which is why I really like the Pilot Pens. Not so much on smudging all over my paper, but the fact that in the winter here in Chicago, we get uh, really, really, really rough winters sometimes. Uh, these keep from freezing up even in the worst conditions that I've found. So on the center here, I have a loop that I can attach my microphone to and then just a hair tie that holds it in place. It's odd how so many companies wanna sell you something to attach your microphone to your vest when off-the-shelf options at Walmart in a pack of 50 for like six bucks exist, but I digress. On my, my right pocket, I have a flashlight, a backup light. Right now I've got the M1T Raider from Olight. Because Olight sends me these things for free, I get lots of little backup lights. And this is one, it takes a CR123 battery, a single one, which is what I keep in my car as backup for all of my weapon lights. So it makes sense to have my backup light take the same batteries that I use for everything else. For you, it might be a double-A flashlight. Really, a backup light is a spare, and it doesn't really matter what you use for it as long as it'll, as long as it'll take care of the basic capabilities that you need. And this one has been pretty ideal for me. The, the setup of it is tap once, you get full power, and then tap again, and you get a lower light level, which is really useful for utility tasks and for tactical needs, and also since it's just a, a normal rubber push tail cap, it's very easy to activate, uh, even when you're using the syringe method. 
Uh, one thing to note about these is there it does have a click lockout, so if you push a little bit, you get light, and if you push too much, you get it clicked on, which could be an issue uh, for tactical situations. This is one of the downsides that most Olights have to things like Surefire, is that Surefire will have a lockout in the back where you have to twist something in order to get it to constant on. Uh, ASP does the same thing. Uh, Streamlight has more of a push and then click system. More about lights all over the channel if you're interested. Also in this pocket, I have a Sharpie marker. Sharpie markers solve lots of problems like uh, writing on tow sheets and abandoned stickers that we're gonna stick onto cars. And also for marking things like addresses on abandoned houses, stuff like that. I have come to like not just having a normal Sharpie, but one with a fine tip on the other end as both an auxiliary pen and another option for marking things that are smaller when you need them to be permanently marked. In here, of course, I keep my spare keys and my jump drive, which I use, I used to use for keeping training videos. Now most of them are up on YouTube for all of you to enjoy. Lots of those on the channel if you're new to the channel. But I also use it for when I'm going to do reports with somebody new since I'm a training officer. I can have them do the narrative of their report on a word processor, put it on this, and then we can copy paste it onto the final report when they're ready to turn in the final report. Or I'll have them do a ghost report, which is where I do the report that gets turned into the boss, and they do a report that just goes to me and into their book. Spare keys, always important. You lock yourself out of the car, you leave these in the car, you want to have a spare set in your pockets. So that way you can get in without having to call the boss or call somebody else and get called out on the radio as, hey, 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 291 locked his keys in his car. So instead of putting them on a pouch, I know this is unusual for a lot of people, but I carry a multi-tool. This is a Leatherman Wave. It's a fairly small multi-tool in the world of multi-tools. I keep this in the top pocket of my vest. Makes it easier to get to slightly cleaner appearance when I'm wearing all this stuff. If you want to see what I look like when I'm wearing all of this stuff, I've got a video on baton placement where you can see me wearing all of my gear. I didn't do this for this because I want you guys to be able to clearly see what it is I'm talking about, be able to get up close with the camera without having lots of focusing issues. The reason I like the Leatherman Wave is I get needle nose pliers and good wire cutters when I open it up, but from the, the closed position, I can have a knife and I can feel that there's a serrated, a little piece of jimping here and that's my serrated knife so it's like a seat belt cutter or a safety cutter if I have to take clothes off of somebody and then on the other side I have a knife that I keep more pristine than this one it's more utility blade and this one I can keep razor sharp all the time nice fine point uh, nice fine edge on it and I can feel all that from the outside I also get a file that I don't have to open the knife to get into you can see it does lots of uh, squad car repairs and then on the other side I have a wood knife which or a, a wood saw, which I don't use very much on the street. Use a little more camping. And then inside I've got scissors with a fine point, which is nice. And then a little tiny screwdriver for your glasses. And then a flat bladed screwdriver, a Phillips or a flathead. And then over here I have something that I hardly ever use on the street and that is a can opener, again, more important for camping with multi-tools. But with multi-tools, the ones that are designed for law enforcement miss out a lot on the stuff that you're going to use day-to-day -day and are more, like, weapon-centric, and I think this is a better everyday, you know, tighten something down in the squad, uh, Jimmy and Doors type of tool. So this is what I suggest to people when they're new. Either this or a Gerber 600 series if you like being able to open it with one hand. In the other, so my left breast pocket, I have a pad of paper, and this is the, the patrolman's secret weapon to be able to take notes and write down information, because most of our job is information process, and that's the only thing I keep in here, because I don't like stuff falling out 10 times a day when I'm taking notes or going to take a call. Up here, I've got my flashlight that I use for work. Currently, I'm using the Olight Warrior X. The Warrior X is not the best duty light. Uh, it is the one that is the biggest question mark for people, and that's why I've had this in long-term review. I have a Surefire G2X, which is a great duty light. I have a Streamlight Stinger, Streamlight Stryon. I've got uh, the Asp Triad lights, the, the Dual Fuel Asp lights, the new ones that are out. Got a bunch of really great duty lights. This one, when we reviewed it, I said, I think this might be a good duty light. I'm going to put it in a long-term review, and that's why I've been using the Warrior X more or less completely 
just the Warrior X for a little over a year now. So far, it's still going strong. Uh, the, there isn't a lot of finish wear. It does get filthy around the lens, which is a, a thing you got to worry about. There's there's an edge here with this crenulated bezel that's hard to get in there and clean. Uh, the good thing about it is that it recharges through a magnetic tail cap that plugs into any USB, so it's easy to charge in the squad. A lot of lights are like that now, but this is kind of a new thing at the time. What I really like is the, the mode selection. You push a little bit for a little bit of light and push harder for a whole lot of light on this metal tail cap switch. It's a very useful UI and useful settings. I didn't even upgrade to the Warrior X Pro, which I also have, or one of the different colors of Warrior X or Warrior X Pro, which I also have, because I wanted to see how long this would work durability-wise for the street so far. So good. There's going to be links for all the lights that I suggest down below. This is currently one of them because if it can last a year of me beating on it, it's probably pretty good. I've, I've broken a lot of stuff within four or five months of actually using it on the street. I've got a bunch of flex cuffs that I've gotten in for review over the years. Uh, these are the ones that I'm still working my way through the original batch of. Maybe use two or three flex cuffs a year. These are the Mills Plastics Cobra cuffs. I also have Safari Land cuffs and the new Asp cuffs. There's going to be a video coming up in the near future comparing the three different types of flex cuffs. I like these because they store compactly. You can put them in a single mag pouch, as you can see there, a single pistol mag pouch, and they come out really easily. And the great thing I like about them is that there's a push button double lock on here so people can't tighten them up on themselves, which is a liability issue for police departments. They also come in a variety of colors, which is cool, and they're very easy to use. On the front here, I am still using my Glock 35. You check the duty belt video, which is going to be coming out about the same time as this video, up there and down below. I'll have links for that. So I've got three standard 15 round uh, 40 caliber Glock magazines. Uh, this is the standard for my Glock 35 that I have for work, and they have been the magazines that I found to be most reliable. The 22 round mags are pretty reliable. I don't like getting into 30, 35 all the crazy number rounds. Plus these are easier to handle, faster to reload, and I'd rather have one thing that's a little less capable that I know works than something that's really, really capable that is less reliable. So I keep three of those up front, which takes them off of my belt, puts some center line on my body, right in that strength triangle that we talk about all the time on the channel where we're most likely to be able to easily manipulate items. I like keeping the mags up front. That's something that if I need them, I need them in a hurry. I have three of them because We've had situations, and I'll leave it at that. Up front, one of the big changes that I have with this vest cover beyond the molly and being able to mount things up front and get them off my belt is that I've been able to integrate a med pouch. Now, the department policy is kind of sketchy on med pouches. I've tried to keep it small and unobtrusive uh, with the capabilities that I most direly need inside, and then I have a separate tourniquet pouch that I have mounted on my belt. For a while, I had my tourniquet mounted down here, and it caused problems with getting in and out and catching on the steering wheel. And also, I wanted to go from just mounting the tourniquet to the outside of my vest cover or my belt to something that protected it, because one of the things that we're finding in studies is that the failure rates of tourniquets are higher if they're exposed to more UV light and rain and things like that. So we want to keep it as protected as possible. The more we learn in law enforcement, the better off we are in keeping our equipment safe. So this is just a Maxpedition pouch that I cut the Maxpedition patch off of the front for uniformity. And then I took the standard zipper pull off and attached a piece of red paracord so that people would know that you know this is med in case someone's going to use this stuff on me. But realistically, I'm thinking it's more likely me using this on someone else, since I'm one of the few people that's actually carrying a med pouch. Almost everyone's carrying a tourniquet these days, but med pouches haven't really made it into the mainstream, at least not in my area. In here, I've got a pressure dressing and two chest seals and a hemostatic dressing in the front, which I think is kind of the bare minimum for a med pouch. One of the great liability things with having a med pouch on your uniform is that, and, and openly available, is that one, it's training point for people. You'd be like, oh no, no. People are like, why do you carry all those magazines? Well, nobody ever asked about this medical pouch. So why don't we ask about the medical pouch? Let's talk about the medical pouch instead of all the magazines that we're carrying or why we need two flashlights. And it kind of opens people up to a side of law enforcement they don't normally see. Also, if you do get an officer involved shooting or you get somebody that's seriously injured, it takes a lot of liability off of you. 
along with it's the right thing to do, obviously, to be able to provide medical care without having to run back to your car. So you can you can have what you need on you right away for the big major emergencies, and then we can keep a first aid kit in the car, which if you've seen my police car trunk bag video, you know I've got a lot of extra med in the car. And one last thing is in this other slash pocket up front, I have FI cards, they're also called interview cards, they're a great way to hold doors open, and also on the other side of it is the agency name, phone number, address, and an area for the RD number, IR number, whatever number you want to call it this month. It's basically the incident number, my name, star number, the date and time that I was out on the call. It allows people to go get a copy of the report that they need. This carrier is mesh lined, which is nice. It's mesh lined on the top, not so much on the bottom, on the, the lower side of the zipper where the armor goes in. On the back, there's a wear spot in it from where I keep my baton. Again, that baton placement video might interest you to know that that's one of the interferences with having a baton uh, closer to the back side of your body is you end up with a wear spot on your vest lots of the time, especially if you're a bigger fellow like me. I've never claimed to be an underwear model, which you'll see if you see my other videos where you can clearly see my whole body. So if this interests you, make sure you go check out my duty belt video again up there and down below. Uh, all the coupon codes and links should be active as of right now. I try to keep up on them. And I'm going to go to the Instagram live stream comments and take some of those from the audience. Uh, until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, check out one of our other videos. Or head on over to the Patreon and see how you can get your name put on your videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are in the description, of course. We'll see you guys next time.